Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel, always with Yunus Sharfawi. In this video, you are going to see how we can test and mock out some Lambda functions using mock K in Kotlin. Let's get started. So here I have a simple example. I have this notification sender and I have this notification service and I have here a UI helper. Okay, so the notification service uses both the sender and the UI helper in order to accomplish his method. So this act as a domain service, okay? So using this notification service, when we send the notification, we will get a callback on success or on failure. And for that reason, we are using the UI helper in order to update the window and of course here, for example, the failure toast the message. So this usually this interface will be implemented using platform specific thing. If you are an Android, for example, when implementing this method, you are going to use notification manager, for example, the notification channel and something similar. So this is set up for testing. Now what we want to do, we want to test this notification service. So we are going to mock out this notification sender. And the main important thing to get from this video is how to deal with this Lambda functions. So Let's go here, here are our tests. Here we are going to start by writing the tests. So the first thing we need is the following. We need to create a notification sender mock. I'm using mock K, you can get it from here. It is a dependency. I'm using Maven, you can use, of course, Gradle. So you can use the mock K here. This is the first thing. And then we are going also to mock the UI helper. It can be an interface, of course. Here's the code for the UI helper. I'm using it as a relax, so I don't have to answer every method in here in the UI helper. And of course, we do have the notification service that consists of the notification and the UI helper mock. So the first thing we can do is at the time of the setup, right, you can do something, we can clear mocks. So this will guarantee that the state of the mock is reset between all the tests. Okay, this is kind of good practice. So here I'm passing the notification sender mock and also the UI helper mock. Now I know some people hate mocks because usually they see mock as a way that exposes the internal implementation of something. And this is most of the case true. But here I'm trying to test this notification service independently of this two things. Usually you are going to provide a fake instead of a mock in order to accomplish this if you want to test this independently. So using a mock in this case, you are testing the generalities. You are not testing implementation specific thing. So this won't make our test fragile to implementation issues. So the first test we are going to write is when sending is successful, we should expect update window to get caught. So how we are going to implement this one? So what we are doing is the following. We are formatting a message. I don't care about formatting the message here. We are not going to test that, of course. We need to see if this method is getting caught. But since I'm going to mock this one, I need to provide some kind of argument capture for these two lambdas. So the first thing we need to create is something called slots. Here is the first slot. It's called slot for on success. This slot comes from the mock, okay? So it will be used to capture argument passed to this notification center. So we can manipulate it and call it. And of course, here is the other one. Like here, you need to provide the type. So our type here is throwable unit. Then what we are going to call, we are going to call the notification service. We are going to call it with send notification, for example, hello. And then I want to see if the method called update window from UI helper mock is called. Usually you can here in the verify there are a lot of parameters. You can specify the ordering sequence, which is a good thing. You can specify how much this get called. For example, you can specify maximum and minimum at most and at least. For example, exactly I'm expecting it to run one time, but this won't execute unless the on success is getting called. So we need to trigger the on success. Here you should kind of set up what should happen, right? You can do it like the following. You can do every on every call from the notification sender mock from the send notification here. Here in the send notification, we are getting something different. Now here we can run into implementation issues. Why? Because here I expect the message to be passed is notification from Yunus and also the message, which is hello. So I'm expecting the following hello, okay? I'm expecting this thing. And for that reason, if our formatting changes, the test will break. And this can be fragile. You can solve this one by letting any kind of argument, but here I want my test to be specific. So the reason of this video is not this argument, but the following arguments. You can call a method directly called capture. So this will capture the argument on success, exactly, and pass it to the method. Let me put all the arguments on separate lines, like that. And the other parameter, which is also I want to capture it, for the on failure. So with this one, when this happens, I can answer what should happen. What should happen is exactly, I want this on success to be invoked because once it is invoked, this method will be called automatically. So here, what should happen? I should call on success 
because that's the beauty of argument capture. It gives me object that I can intercept during the execution call, right? I can see that captured value and I can invoke it here. And now if I run this test, it should pass. Exactly, it is passing. If you change any values here, it, it will break, okay? Now we need to run the same test, but when it is in case of failure. It will be exactly the same thing. We should only test an error when it's unsuccessful or going to test an error. It will be the same exact thing. Maybe you can put random stuff here. Of course, I have to put it here and also here. And then I don't want on success to get executed. I want on failure to get executed. And maybe I can pass a legal state exception. For example, IO prop. And now instead of this update method, we are going to pass the following here. We are going to pass toast error. Okay, so we can pass toast error like the following. And now we can run everything and it should work as expected. Exactly, it is working as expected. So this is basically how you can test Lambda functions that are like kind of inner function and you want to intercept its call and invoke them maybe on conditional. For example, you are just invoking them. You can have any logic here and it's still, it will work fine. That's it for this video. If you have any specific question regarding testing, specifically testing with Mocha or testing with other frameworks, let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and always see you in the next videos. Salam alaikum.